Blowfish baseball is back here at the Lexington County Baseball Stadium. But if you're a fan, don't get your hopes up about attending a game. As of right now, fans are not permitted to enter the stadium due to a new ordinance passed by Governor McMaster. Taking a simple walk through your neighborhood can be one of the easiest ways to relieve stress during these COVID times. Just remember to bring a mask with you in case you run into any familiar faces out here on the trails. Recently, rumors were circulating that three-time national champion and former Ohio State Buckeyes head coach Urban Meyer was in the area. When asked what it would take for the Gamecocks to land a head coach of this status, I was told it was very unlikely. When the pandemic first started back in March of last year, parks like these fell silent. But as more and more people are getting vaccinated, the attendance at local parks is beginning to rise. As you can see off to my left, more and more people are showing up to the park as we speak and having a great time with their friends. So even after 12 long years of being affiliated with the New York Mets, it was no surprise that the Mets packed up their bags and left the capital city of South Carolina. Although the Fireflies currently do not have a team, Cates explained that he believes the effects of this will be minimal and says that there is still opportunity to improve. Football is back here at Chapin High School, but the team still has a lot to figure out before their season starts. Currently, a quarterback battle is taking place that could determine how their season is going to start. With less than a month to go until their first game of the season and unable to practice with the football, head coach of Dutch Fork Tom Knott still has high expectations for his Silver Foxes. Sunday, Will Muschamp well, again, was relieved of his duties as head coach of Gamecock football, different. leaving many Gamecock fans wondering, who's next? Currently, the Gamecocks have a few options in mind, but when talking with sports reporter and anchor program, Mike Yuva, as well as sports director Mitch Brown over at Watch Fox 57, they believe one head coach stands out. But Billy Napier is a guy that really just stands out to me, um, and, and I think he kind of fits the bill of everything that they're looking for. I would like to see Billy Napier here in, in, in this role here. He's Both guys believe Billy uh, Napier, head coach of Louisiana University's uh, Raging Cajuns football program, stands out because he is a guy that can put up points and land big time recruits. He's a guy that can be able to generate points. I mean, that's the first thing I think of. He's a guy that um, has a history of being able to, to land big time recruits. You know, I think Billy Napier is a guy that can come in here, uh, can, you know, get good offensive minds in here, uh, can turn that defense around and play a style of defense that benefits the, the players that they have. In a press conference yesterday, Gamecock Athletic Director Ray Tanner mentioned that a decision regarding naming the new head coach could be made as early as December 16th. When asked why they thought the program was moving this fast to find Muschamp's replacement, both guys said it was definitely for recruiting purposes. Recruiting, you have to be able to set the tone in terms of letting Guys who have already verbally committed to Muschamp, um, let them know, like, hey, this is what the direction of the program's going. We need to get a guy in so that he can talk to these recruits, so that he can keep them solidified in their commitment, so they can figure out if they need to get some last-minute positions in. Recently, rumors were circulating that three-time national champion and former Ohio State Buckeyes head coach Urban Meyer was in the area. When asked what it would take for the Gamecocks to land a head coach of this status, I was told it was very unlikely. Get out of here. That, that never, ha it never happened. Don't be, don't be throwing fake stuff at me, Robbie. I know you <laughs> saw it on Twitter. It would take a, a large paycheck, and it would take, ooh, it would take 2020 taking another turn that we didn't expect. So through all the different possibilities, Gamecock fans can be pretty certain so that the new head coach will not be so Urban Meyer. For Carolina News in Columbia, I'm Robbie Whittle. How we found out, which, which was through a tweet, um, that was a surprise. John Cates, um, general manager of the Columbia Fireflies, was not surprised that the Mets were cutting ties with the Fireflies. However, he was not expecting to hear the news from a tweet he saw at the same time as the general public. A lot of different options. I think Steve pointed out we want to be Sandy Alderson, general manager of the New York Mets, first announced in a Mets press conference last week that the organization was dropping their connection with the Fireflies without telling their minor league affiliate in advance. Cates believes the reason Alderson dropped the news in this fashion was due to the pressure of answering questions from the New York media 
and is still very thankful for the years the program spent with the New York Mets. Um, so I'd imagine that's probably not the way Sandy wanted it to go either. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we had 12 plus good years with the Mets. Recently, the MLB has added a new emphasis on having minor league affiliate teams, such as the Fireflies, closer to the major league affiliate team they feed into. The Mets plan on moving their new affiliate to Syracuse, Brooklyn, or Bridgehampton, all of these locations being in the state of New York. The only location outside of New York where they are currently considering moving their affiliate is St. Lucie, Florida, where the Mets have their spring training facility. So even after 12 long years of being affiliated with the New York Mets, it was no surprise that the Mets packed up their bags and left the capital city of South Carolina. Although the Fireflies currently do not have a team, Cates explained that he believes the effects of this will be minimal and says that there is still opportunity to improve. It's an opportunity for, for a new beginning. You know, we're coming off of a, a season that didn't happen. Um, It'd be nice to play 500 baseball or better on a regular basis. And, and hopefully, you know, whoever selected to uh, or whoever selects us will be will be a team in that position. Cates also said that he expects the Fireflies to become reaffiliated with the minor league team, as it is clearly reflected by the Fireflies updated bio on Twitter, newly single and ready to mingle. This news has made its way to many fans, <laughs> leaving them excited to see what the future holds for the Fireflies. Obviously, I'm sad to see the Mets leaving South Carolina, but maybe the new team will bring us a winning record. So for now, the future is still glowing for the Columbia Fireflies. For Carolina News, I'm Robbie Whittle. This one, he pulls over the right field wall. The SEC still hasn't made a final decision on their fall sports, but this week we found out they're pushing the date back for all fall sports to August 31st. On Friday, the Southeastern Conference announced student athletes who elect to not participate in the fall 2020 academic semester because of health or safety concerns related to COVID-19 will continue to have their scholarship honored by their university. Make sure to tune back into sports after this break. So guys, Hugh Freeze is a top prospect coach for the Gamecock football program this year. Mm -hmm. They want to bring him in as a head coach, but he has some baggage left over in the SEC. Do you think the Gamecocks will be able to look past that? I really do. I mean, I think outside of that little cheating scandal, he's been a phenomenal coach for his whole career. Thanks, Chase. Let's dive into sports. On Sunday, the Carolina Panthers won their first home game of the Matt Rule era against the Arizona Cardinals, 31 to 21. 5,000 fans were in attendance. The Gamecocks lost on Saturday down in the swamp to the number three Florida Gators. The Gamecocks will be looking for their first win of the season when they play the Vanderbilt Commodores in Nashville this Saturday. The Miami Heat picked up their first win in the NBA Finals last night against LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. The series is now one and two favoring the Lakers. That's all for sports. Thanks for joining us.